Welcome to Quality Improvement, Introduction to Quality Improvement in Health Information Technology. This is Lecture B. The objectives for Introduction to Quality Improvement in Health Information Technology are to explain healthcare quality and quality improvement, QI. Describe quality improvement as a goal of key national health care priorities, including the National Quality Strategy. According to an Institute of Medicine report, quality of care is the degree to which health services for individuals and populations increase the likelihood of desired outcomes and are consistent with current professional knowledge. So who defines health care quality? Lots of people do, and each does so from their own unique perspective. Take healthcare providers, for instance. They are more likely to view quality as the application of evidence based professional knowledge to the needs of individual patients. Patients and their families, on the other hand, may place more importance on how the provider talks with them or how long they have to sit in the waiting room. Payers value patient satisfaction and use of preventative services rather than focusing on longer-term clinical outcomes of the patient. And regulatory bodies like the Joint Commission, CMS, or professional organizations such as the American Medical Association view quality as conforming to their standards. Payers have also started using provider performance on quality measures as a means to create narrow networks and link payments to performance rates. Each of the four intersecting circles represents a category of entities that help define quality health care. Health care providers, application of evidence-based principles, patients and families, communication and timeliness, professional and regulatory bodies, conformity with standards, and payers, cost versus outcomes. Each of the organizations listed here play an important role in the quality measurement and improvement ecosystem. The National Quality Forum, NQF, is a public-private partnership and is charged with improving quality of healthcare in America. NQF has a three-part mission that includes working in partnership to achieve consensus around performance improvement based on national goals and priorities. Supporting standards for publicly measuring and reporting performance based on national consensus and supporting the use of outreach programs and educational interventions to attain national goals. The National Committee for Quality Assurance, NCQA, is a private 501c3 not-for-profit organization dedicated to improving healthcare quality. It develops quality standards and performance measures for a broad range of healthcare entities. These measures and standards are the tools that organizations and individuals use to identify opportunities for improvement. The American Medical Association, AMA, convened Physician Consortium for Performance Improvement, the PCPI, as a national physician-led initiative dedicated to improving patient health and safety, mostly in the ambulatory care setting. PCPI's main charter is in identifying and developing evidence-based clinical performance measures and measurement resources that enhance quality of patient care and foster accountability. Promoting the implementation of effective and relevant clinical performance improvement activities and advancing the science of clinical performance measurement and improvement. The Joint Commission is an independent, not-for-profit organization that accredits and certifies more than 19,000 healthcare organizations and programs in the United States. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement, IHI, is an independent, not-for-profit organization located in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The IHI is concerned with investigating new models of care and how they perform, while partnering with patients, families, and healthcare professionals. In addition, IHI is focused upon encouraging and supporting change while helping to maintain the momentum and commitment to serious and transformational health system change. Finally, the IHI is committed to innovation and wide-scale adoption of best practices, high-quality care, and cost-efficient services for all. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality's AHRQ mission is to produce evidence to make healthcare safer, higher quality, more accessible, equitable, and affordable. 
and to work within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and with other partners to make sure that the evidence is understood and used through a number of activities. For more than a decade, AHRQ has also produced the National Health Care Quality Report, NHQR, and the National Health Care Disparities Report, NHDR. They describe these reports as follows. The National Health Care Quality Report tracks the health care system through quality measures, such as the percentage of heart attack patients who received recommended care when they reached the hospital or the percentage of children who received recommended vaccinations. The National Health Care Disparities Report summarizes health care quality and access among various racial, ethnic, and income groups and other priority populations, such as residents of rural areas and people with disabilities. The latest versions of these reports can be found on the AHRQ website. Some of the important conclusions of these important reports are listed here. Needs to be improved, especially for the uninsured. Patient safety and health care. Associated infections have shown improvement. Quality is improving, but pace is slow, especially in preventive care and chronic disease management. Disparities are common, and lack of insurance is a contributor. Many disparities are not decreasing. Those that warrant increased attention include care for cancer, heart failure, and pneumonia. Mandated by the Affordable Care Act, the National Quality Strategy, NQS, was developed through a transparent and collaborative process, with input from a range of stakeholders, to develop national consensus on priorities for quality measurement and improvement. More than 300 groups, organizations, and individuals representing all sectors of the healthcare industry and the general public provided comments. Based on this input, the NQS established a set of three overarching aims that build on the Institute for Healthcare Improvement's triple aim. These aims are consistent with and supportive of Health and Human Services, HHS, delivery system reform initiatives to achieve better care smarter spending, and healthier people through incentives, information, and the way care is delivered. The aims are used to guide and assess local, state, and national efforts to improve health and the quality of health care. Better care, improve overall quality by making health care more patient-centered, reliable, accessible, and safe. Healthy people, healthy communities, Improve the health of the U.S. population by supporting proven interventions to address behavioral, social, and environmental determinants of health, in addition to delivering higher quality care. Affordable care. Reduce the cost of quality health care for individuals, families, employers, and government. To advance these aims, the NQS focuses on six priorities that address the most common health concerns that Americans face. Patient safety, making care safer by reducing harm caused in the delivery of care. Person-centered care, ensuring that each person and family is engaged as partners in their care. Care coordination, promoting effective communication and coordination of care. Effective treatment, promoting the most effective prevention and treatment practices for the leading causes of mortality, starting with cardiovascular disease. Healthy living, Working with communities to promote wide use of best practices to enable healthy living. Care affordability. Making quality care more affordable for individuals, families, employers, and governments by developing and spreading new health care delivery models. There are a number of methodologies used to improve the quality of the system. Model for improvement, lean thinking, Six Sigma, theory of constraints, customer-inspired quality, and many others. The detailed review of these multiple methodologies is beyond the scope of this lecture. However, at the core of all these methodologies, there are the same basic principles that we will now review. The quality improvement process starts when you set an aim. You cannot improve a system if you do not have a clear idea of what you need to improve. Subsequently, a continuous cycle of measurement, change, and learning starts. Measurement is an essential component of quality since you must have the ability to measure change to direct change in the appropriate direction. 
Noted scientist and management consultant William Denning's famous quote, what can't be measured can't be improved, is still true in the 21st century. Change is the second essential component of any improvement process. Finally, the third essential component of improvement is our ability to learn and better understand the system we are changing. To achieve long-lasting change, we need to move away from the project mentality and dive into the system we are trying to change. The aim we set needs to be very specific. If at all possible, a numeric aim should be set. It is very difficult to improve a system if your aim is vague. We will improve our infection rate is a much harder aim to attain than we will cut our rate of hospital-acquired pneumonia by half. However, this aim, although better than the former, could be improved. What is your current rate of infection? Where are the majority of the infections happening? Is there any shift or time of year where these infections are worse? The inclusion of all those aspects into your aim denotes an understanding of the system you are working on and assists you in achieving your goal. A better aim would read, we will reduce the number of hospital-acquired pneumonias from the current 35% to 15% in the ICU. Assigning a timeline is an important component of setting an aim. If you don't have a timeline to achieve your improvement, it is difficult to see it through or to engage a team that usually is busy with many other responsibilities. Making your aim measurable will assist you in seeing it through. There are very commendable aims that cannot be accomplished because they cannot be measured. An example of an immeasurable goal is, we will make 90% of our patients happy in six months. Although it is specific and it has a numeric value, we have to choose a variable that can be measured. How will we measure if they are happy? A better option for this aim could be 90% of our patients will rate our services as excellent and will state that they would recommend our services to a friend or family member. This captures the essence of the original aim and allows you to measure it. Make sure you challenge your team with the aim you choose. An aim you can achieve in a week may make you look good in the short term, but it is unlikely to bring permanent improvement to your system. As we mentioned before, measurement is an essential component of quality, since you must have the ability to measure change in order to direct change in the appropriate direction. There are three types of quality measures we will be focusing on. Process measures. These measures look at the steps in the system or processes of recommended care. For example, in clinical guidelines, valid process measures should influence outcomes and thus should improve before the outcome measures do. They assist us in determining if we are on track to get the improvements we want to see in our system or identify gaps in care if we are not on track. Outcome measures. These measures determine the impact of our changes in the system. They measure results about a person's health and well-being. Outcome measures can be intermediate or long-term. Balancing measures. These measures are designed to look at the whole system and make sure we are not causing new problems in other parts of the system while trying to fix something. Although these measures tend to be measures of cost or patient experiences, any of the process or outcome measures could be used as balancing measures if they help us look at the whole system. We will now present two examples of measures selected for improvement projects. The first is a hospital example. In this example, the staff of the ICU set an aim to reduce the number of ventilator-associated pneumonias, VAP. They set a specific aim with a clear timeline. For process measures, they choose factors that have been chosen to relate to VAP. For example, the more days a patient is connected to a ventilator, the more likely he will become infected. The outcome measure is actually the number, or rate, of VAP. This measure ties directly to the aim. In this case, staff members have chosen to use cost of care as a balancing measure, since there is a chance that by incorporating the changes, they must decrease the rate of VAP, and the cost of care will improve. They also included the rate of reintubation 
as a balancing measure, since it is possible that some of the changes they incorporate may cause patients to be extubated too soon. These are two examples of how balancing measures look at the rest of the system. In our ambulatory example, the team members want to improve their access to care. To do so, they will reduce the time it takes patients to get an appointment. In this case, the process measures are the supply, or amount of slots available for practitioners to see their patients, the demand for appointments, and the no-show rate. The staff chose to include the no-show rate in the process measures because they believe that by reducing their no-show rate, they will have more space to see patients sooner. If they thought that the changes they wanted to incorporate would increase the number of no-shows in the schedule, they would have added this measure to the balancing measures. The outcome measure is the third next available appointment. It is a good measure of access since it disregards appointments that are available due to last moment cancellations. Again, the outcome measure ties directly to the aim. Finally, the balancing measure the staff chose is a measure of patient satisfaction. As you can see, setting a measurement strategy is not cut and dry. You need to make some assumptions regarding where you envision your system is going. After you set your measurement strategy, it is time for you to consider the change you want to test. As you consider change, you will first need to decide on basic concepts or strategies that you want to focus on. Overall, ideas for change will lead you to improvement, but they are not specific enough for testing change. In our VAP example, our concepts and strategies could be reduce the number of ventilator days, reduce over sedation, and improve oral hygiene. Once you have established the overall categories, you will design tests to measure change. To accelerate improvement, the tests of change need to be small, fast, and frequent. This way, you will be able to build new tests of change on your initial improvement and head toward your aim. Examples of tests of change in our example could be some of the following. To reduce the number of ventilator days, we could have the respiratory therapist test the settings every two hours to determine when a patient is ready for extubation. The rounds should include discussion of extubation for all patients. Trials of spontaneous breathing could be included as part of the routine. As you can see, these are specific tests that can be done fairly fast and of which we could have results in a day or two. To determine the effect of a test, you may need to include measures and discussion of the test. Continuing with the example we have been using, we could meet with the respiratory therapist to determine at the end of the first day how the tests are going and determine if they need some tweaking. In designing your change package, you may want to consider using pre-existing change packages. These are built by QI professionals based on scientific evidence. This is an example of one such change package. The table contains a partial copy of the California Academy of Family Physicians Diabetes Initiative Care Model Change Package. It was originally developed by Lumetra, California's quality improvement organization, under contract with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to assist practitioners to improve the care of patients with diabetes. The final component of improvement is learning about your system. Intertwined in all aspects of improvement is the concept of the importance of understanding your system in order to be able to improve it. This is based on a system theory proposed by William Deming, mentioned earlier. His theory of profound knowledge is based on the principle that each organization, department, site, is composed of a system of interrelated processes and people. Improvement of the system depends on the capability to organize the balance of each component to enhance the entire system. Thus, understanding and learning about your system is essential to improving it. This concludes Lecture B of Introduction to Quality Improvement and in Health Information Technology. In summary, quality of healthcare in the U.S. needs improvement. Quality improvement is an ongoing process that includes the setting of an aim, a progressive measurement, change test, and understanding of the system.